Hello everybody, my name is Reza Dorani and uh, today I would be talking about the meeting capture power app template which I have added as a community contribution today and uh, I would like to talk all about what this app can do. Before I begin that, uh, just to let you guys know, if you go to powerusers.microsoft.com and sign up, uh, this is the community forum for Power Apps, Microsoft Flow and Power BI. If you have any questions around any of these services, you can come here, post your questions and rest assured you'll get an answer within 24 hours. So if you, if you go to the Power Apps community and if you look at the community apps gallery, there are some really cool apps that have been posted here and these apps are free. Yes, these apps are free. You can go and download apps and use these apps. Uh, many of the community contributors have posted some really cool apps out here. And uh, if you go to recently posted apps, uh, as you can see, I just posted the meeting capture version two app. Why this is version two, I'll talk about it shortly. And uh, here's a link to the GitHub repo that has the zip file that you can go ahead and download. So all you, all you need to do is go here and just download the zip file. Within that you have meeting capture v2 and here is the exported package of the power app. Now before I begin with what is meeting capture v2, let's first look at one of the power app templates which has been available for a very long time. It's called meeting capture. So if you actually go to power apps and you load the meeting capture template, as you can see, it's an all-in-one meeting capture tool. You can view the details of your meeting. You can capture notes. You can take pictures of whiteboards. You can assign tasks to users in planner. And then you can send all meeting attendees the notes that you've taken in the meeting as well as the images that you've captured. So let's go ahead and create an app using the meeting capture template. And this template does use uh, four connections. One is Office 365 users because it reads user profiles. Uh, Outlook because it needs to send an email after the meeting is over. Uh, OneNote because you can also export your meeting notes to OneNote. And Planner because you have the option of creating tasks. And if, if required, you can export them to a plan in Planner. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. And what this is going to do is it's going to go ahead and create an app for me using the meeting capture app template. And as you can see, all the connections first need to be authorized before I go ahead and create this app. So I'm just going to go and allow these. So this is going to go ahead and create the app using the template. Now I'm not going to walk through each and every screen and what it does, but there's a nice tutorial at the beginning that you can look at, but I'm just going to play this app and I just want to show you what this app can do. So as you can see, it says the current meeting has been selected for you. So right now I am recording this at 9.39 PM CST. And if you look at my calendar, I have a meeting that's set from nine to 10.30. So if I go to the meeting capture app, you see it's already highlighting the meeting for me that's currently running and I can directly select this and start the meeting or I can hit change and this will load all the meetings for today. I believe it does today and tomorrow. Uh, yes, it does that. So it's going to load all the meetings for today and tomorrow and uh, it's going to showcase all your meetings here. So you can pick any of these meetings and whenever you're ready, you can hit start meeting. You can also start taking notes even if the meeting is in future. So in this case, I'm going to say start the meeting. Now this is a meeting that I set up uh, in, in, uh, in my own tenant and I invited three users, lucky me, Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic are the attendees of my meeting. And as you can see, it's a really cool app because it tells me who the attendees of my meeting are. It gives me the details of my meeting. So if it was a Skype meeting or a Teams meeting, all the information would be available out here. Also, if you notice on the top, this meeting is an hour and a half long. It started at nine, right now it's 9.49. So it's, it's, it's actually counting down to how many minutes are left in the meeting. So it's a live countdown timer giving me an indication how long uh, to uh, how long is remaining for this meeting. And here I can start capturing notes during the meeting. So maybe we've had discussion on tennis, you know, great backhand, great forehand and so on and so forth. We had, we had some discussions on tennis, we had a meeting and uh, uh, the next step, what I can also do uh, is I can click on this little icon over here and I can actually 
draw sketches. So I can actually go ahead and draw sketches. So I can say, take some sketches right here. This is like a whiteboard kind of a look and feel and this uses the pen and put control. So you can actually go and draw things out here and you can save sketches. So I can draw a lot of sketches out here. I have a lot of options here to play with and I can draw my sketches. I can whiteboard stuff works really well on an iPad and then I can save my sketches. Now all these sketches are getting saved. I will show you where do they get saved. Uh, I can also go to camera. This will ask me to load my camera and this is me right now. So I'm just gonna click a picture of mine and I am gonna say, okay, this image is fine. I'm gonna go back to my meeting notes. So I can, I can keep taking pictures during the meeting. I can uh, do whiteboarding, draw sketches, save my sketches. And at the same time, I can go ahead and assign task. You know, I can say, okay, here's my first task and here's the due date of this task. And I want to assign this task to Roger Federer. Now, uh, when this template was created, you could only assign one task per user. But right now, Planner allows you to have a task assigned to multiple users. In this case, you can only assign one. So I'm assigning task one to Roger. And so on and so forth, I can keep assigning tasks. If you note, I can only assign tasks to the people in my meeting, but I can also go ahead and pick users who are not in my meeting, add them here and assign a task to them. I can even go ahead and do that. I can only assign planner tasks to people who are in my organization. So that's it. I go through the meeting notes app, a great tool, a great template. All you need to do is just go and say, Hey, I want to create the app and you get all of this. You can take notes. Uh, you can invite attendees during the meet while the meeting is going on. You can take notes. You can even add notes later. You can go to email and this, you can just send an email to all your attendees right now, or you can just pick, Hey, I want to just send an email to Rafael Nadal. I just want to send him an email. I can just send him an email right here. This is the box where I can compose my email on the fly. And if I hit send, it will send an email from my Outlook to Nadal. Uh, also the attachments that I was uploading, if you see, there's a little symbol out here called attachments. So if I click this, it's gonna show me the photos that I have taken. I can even remove the picture if I want to. And it will also show me all the sketches I've taken. So if there's a sketch I don't like, I can say, yep, I wanna delete this. Right now I have one sketch, I have one photo that I've taken as part of attachments in my meeting. I'm gonna hit finish and save. Uh, one point to note before I go ahead is the meeting capture app stores everything locally in the app while the app is running. So if I was to close this app, I will lose all the data that I have entered in my, uh, during this particular session. So it's very important for me to make sure I hit finish. Now, as you can see, when I hit finish and save, I have multiple options. I can export it to OneNote so I can go and select any OneNote that I have and this will list all the OneNotes that are associated with your account. My account right here does not have any so it's not listing it but you can pick your OneNote, pick a section in your OneNote and you can export it there. You can also go to Planner so you can pick your plans, pick, pick your buckets and uh, it will go ahead and add the plan there. Uh, just for the sake of this, let's go to office.com. Let's go to um planner and this is a new tenant that i've spun up so i don't believe i have any plans created out here so what i will do is i'm going to go ahead and create a plan i'm going to call this contoso plan and this is a public plan that i want to create here's the plan that i have created right here and now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add some members. I'm gonna add my users as members. Again, this is just typical planner stuff. Doll, come back, chocolate, and Roger. Better. Okay, so I've added my members to my plan. I'm gonna head back to my meeting capture app. Uh, in this case, obviously, because I just added the plan, I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh. Oh, I don't think I gotta refresh my data source, sorry. So if I go back and hit select, okay, I think it did not load the plans for me. I'll check this out later. But what you can do is you can, you can pick your plan, pick your bucket, and you can export the tasks. If you have tasks created, you can export it there. Or at the end of it all, you can just send an email out to everyone, it, it, all the attendees of the meeting. So that's what you can do with this app. And when I hit export, it's gonna go ahead and send an email. So if I wanna also make sure that I am there in this, I'm just gonna add myself. Uh, I'm gonna hit export and I'm gonna say yes. So this is going to go ahead and this should send a nice looking email right here to me and Nadal because we were the two recipients with the attachment and the meeting notes in a nicely formatted manner.
right? I have my tasks, I have my meeting notes, meeting details, and the attendees of my meeting. Very cool. Very, very cool app. Now, what I have done is I've actually taken this template, the meeting notes template, and I've expanded this. And that is what I wanted to demo now. So this is part one of, it's become what, 10 minutes now. So now we're gonna head over to the actual app in question. And uh, let's say if you went to my GitHub repository and you downloaded the meeting capture app, all you need to do is download the zip file from my GitHub repository related to the meeting capture app and go to apps, power app, import a package. And all I'm doing right now is importing the package. I'm gonna say, yes, create this app as new. It's called meeting notes v2. Uh, if you would like to change the name, you can do so and just hit import. <clears throat> So once I do this, what this is going to do is it's gonna go ahead and import this package. And once it imports the package, it's gonna go ahead and create the app for me based on the export template of the meeting notes app that I put forth in GitHub. So it's, let's wait for a while while this imports, there we go. So this app has imported, right? And now I can go back to apps, here's the meeting notes app, and I can hit edit. Now, the moment I do this, it's gonna open the app for me. Of course, I'm opening it in edit mode right now because I want to just show all the different features to you guys. Uh, so this is gonna go ahead and load the app. As you can see, same set of connectors, OneNote, Planner, uh, Office 365 users, and Outlook. So same set of connectors, no new connectors were added. Uh, this app does use a component, a component uh, reusable artifacts that you can create and use within your app. I'll show you where I'm using it. So here's my app, I'm gonna play the app and this is the version two of the meeting notes app that I created and the first thing that strikes out in this, as you can see is, okay, this is straight away telling me that, hey, here's the current meeting that's running exactly same as the previous version. This is the current meeting, it's running, select this and you can just start the meeting. If I want to look at all meetings, I can click on this. My app has, I've added a lot of additional things in my app. So number one, as you can see is there's this little icon out here. And if you hover on this, it's going to tell you who the organizer of the meeting is. So in this case, I was the person who organized the meeting and that's why my account is in there. If I hit all meetings, obviously this is going to load all the meetings, but only show me the meetings for today. I can also go and say, show me the meetings for tomorrow. Additionally, in this case, as you can see, because this meeting is related to Microsoft Teams, it is also going to show me a little Teams icon out here. So that's a good visual cue telling me that, hey, this is a Microsoft Teams meeting. If it's Skype, it'll show me a Skype meeting logo out here. Uh, there are ways in which you can add other meeting logos as well. Uh, also, as you can see, the organizer is uh, is my Catapult account. It's, it's another account from another tenant. So because this meeting involves a user who is not in my local domain, you see this little bell icon, it tells me that this is a client meeting. Again, may not be the right wording here, but all I'm trying to highlight here is that this meeting involves users who are not a part of your domain, okay? That's what this is highlighting out here, and that's why I'm saying client meeting because this user doesn't belong to our domain. So it gives you a clear visual cue of whether it's a Teams meeting, who the organizer is, and yes, this is a client meeting, okay? I can also refresh, so if I was to update my calendar, I can come here and refresh, and it will refresh it. Additionally, not just today and tomorrow, if I wanna go ahead and actually schedule a meeting on the fly, I can do this. I can just hit schedule a meeting, add attendees, add a subject, add a message, and then define the date, time, schedule, and just hit send, and it will actually create a meeting on the fly right within the app itself. So you don't have to leave the app to create a meeting. And you can directly create your meeting and start capturing notes. Additionally, I also added something called as all calendar details. And mind you, both all calendar details and schedule a meeting are actually screen templates and power apps. It's, these are also things that's out of the box. I just added it to the meeting template app. So if I go to all calendar details, what this is going to do is going to list out all my calendars. So now I can not only take notes in my standard calendar, but I can also, if I have other calendars that I've set up, I can just go to any calendar and go to any date, any time, right? And it's clearly highlighting that, hey, there's a meeting out here. You see this little visual cue? I can click on this. There is a meeting on that day. Yes, this meeting is in the past, but I can still go and start taking notes. 
Now, this is the modified version of the meeting notes app. The first thing, if you'll notice on the top, it says meeting ended and there's an orange bar out here. So I've added different visual cues to tell you that yes, this meeting has ended. I'm gonna go back to capture another meeting because I don't wanna capture this meeting. I wanna show you a live meeting. So if I go to today, this is the running meeting right now. I'm gonna hit start meeting. And as you can see, this meeting is currently running. It's clearly telling me how much time is remaining in this meeting. So I just have 38 minutes remaining. If you look at the bar that's running, it's currently yellow. The moment it gets to beyond 80%, it goes into orange. So that way it tells you that, hey, you know, you have less time remaining. And when the meeting is initially going on, it's green. So it's like a three color combination, letting you know where you are in this meeting. So great, great tool to uh, do time check while your meeting is going on. Again, the attendees list is the same, but there's there's a little more than that. If you uh, hover on this right now, you see it says none. That's because none of them have accepted yet. Had they accepted, you would actually see the symbol here as accepted or tentative or declined. So I'm giving you all those visual cues as well that hey, has to have these people accepted your meeting, not accepted your meeting, so and so forth. This is the details of the meeting that's right here. Now the notes, I have modified this to be a rich text. So now instead of instead of just, just talking or just taking uh, notes in plain text manner, now this is a full rich text field. So you can add links, you can add URLs. Uh, just fascinated with Google. Uh, Google.com, just gonna put this in right here. So you can just go in here and uh, put, add links, uh, format your text. You can even copy paste from Word, so I have some notes that I have taken previously. I'm just gonna copy and paste it right in here. And as you can see, the formatting is respected. So very, very powerful, right? You can take notes on the fly and you can format using this really cool rich text uh, editor tool. You can do a lot of things here. So do play with this. Let me know how this one works. It's, it's again a, a control that's available in Power Apps. Uh, also, at the same time, as you can see, I can obviously go ahead and add, add tasks, but a little different. You can add tasks of uh, up to 150 characters in length. Again, you can define the due date for your task. And in my case, you can pick multiple users. So you can assign a task to more than one user, a planner task, if you want to. And you can hit save task. Now, these tasks, you can export them to a plan in planner if you want to, or you can just create them as a task that just goes out in the email. So it's just a notification to the user, not an actual task in Planner. So it depends how you want to use it. But I can just keep going in here and I can keep adding tasks and I can keep assigning these tasks and just keep hitting save. And these tasks will be listed out here. I can click back and delete the task if I want to. Okay, so I'm loading up my tasks. It's telling me how many tasks I have. At the same time, if you notice on the left-hand side, there are a lot more options. Uh, option number one, obviously, is the main notes screen. There's the second option, which is called drawing, which is exactly the same. So you can come here, draw your sketches and hit save. It's exactly the same. Third one is also exactly the same. Just go ahead, take a picture and hit save. The fourth one is now giving, this is giving you the ability to go ahead and upload a picture. So let's say during the meeting, you've actually taken a picture and you want to upload that picture. Maybe you took a screen, uh, you took a screenshot of a whiteboard or something and you want to just upload it. You can do it right here. Just take the picture. Uh, get the file and just upload the file right here into the meeting. So you can keep doing this. You can keep adding different pictures and those pictures will keep getting added to the attachments. Okay, so you can keep saving pictures. That's again an extra thing. Also what I've added in here is the ability for you to attach files. So maybe during the meeting there are certain files that are shared or that are important that were discussed. So let's say in my case I have a few invoice files that I want to share. I can upload those files right here. You can upload up to 10 files. This is using the standard attachments control in Power Apps. Again, there's a trick to get this. Uh, next one is actually doing recordings. Now, unfortunately, you see these, uh, I'll talk about these icons later, how you can change them. Uh, so in this case, I know this is a database symbol, but I've called this record. So you can actually go ahead and even record audio files during the meeting. So I'm gonna hit allow my microphone. Uh, hi, this is Reza Durrani and we are starting the meeting. I'm gonna stop this. So as you can see, this audio file got added here in a gallery and it's got a default name to it. I can change this. I can call this start of meeting discussion. Okay. And let's say I want to record another audio file. Uh, uh, hello, Nadal, how are you today? Just gonna hit stop. 
it's added right here. So maybe this was part part two of the meeting, part three of the meeting, four, and so on and so forth. And also you can go ahead and delete them and you can also play them in line and listen to it. I'm not sure if the audio is coming, but it's actually playing right now. So you can listen to your audio files. So you can actually go ahead and record audio files. You can add attachments to your meeting. You can also upload images to your meeting. You can take your own pictures. You can whiteboard stuff. You can do everything with this app. Finally, when you head back to notes, if I go back to attachments, if you remember all the things were going here, so you can see all the photos that I've uploaded are right here. I can click on them. If I don't like them, I can delete them. I can see all my sketches out here. The files that I uploaded also go into photos because there are photo files that I'm uploading. You can only upload photos there. The attachments are any kind of files that you want to upload. And here's the list of all the invoices I uploaded and here's the audio recording. And if I want to go back to that screen, I just hit this little icon. It takes me back to the screen and I can make modifications to it during the meeting. Again, please note, none of this is saved within the app. This is all running while your app is running. So if for some reason your browser crashes, your app crashes, you will lose all the meeting notes. I hope in future when I, when I work on this uh, app or V3 or a V4, I'll add offline capabilities as well. Things wherein we store things so we don't lose things. So that's, that's more or less it, right? So visual cues, uh, attendee information, so many good things that have been added to this app. And finally, when you hit finish and save, this takes you to the second screen. Again, the option to export this to Planner, the option to export this to OneNote, right? So you can export this to OneNote. In my app, when you pick a notebook and if you don't have a section, you can also go ahead and add a section to the notebook. So you can actually put a new section name and you can then hit OK and it will add a new section to your notebook. So all of this is available right here. And finally, when you're done with this, you can hit export. Now, another little change what I added, as you can see, it says all attendees, so it's showing you all attendees of the meeting. If I do internal only, what this is, is basically just, just share this with internal users, that is users within the same domain. All of them are in the same domain. That's why all attendees and internal only is the same. And if I do me, it will only filter by me. I'm not in this meeting because for some reason, I don't know why I didn't add my account in there. But if I do me, it would have only shown my account. Okay, so that's how, that's how these filters work. Uh, finally, when you're done, uh, my name's not here, so I'm just gonna add my name as well because I wanna see the email. I'm gonna hit export, I'm gonna hit yes. So what this is going to do is this is gonna go ahead and send all of us an email with the notes of the meeting. Uh, come on. Waiting for the email to come out. All right, while I wait for that email to come out. And and while this meeting went on, as in once you finish the meeting, you can go and start another meeting or you can also schedule a follow up. So you can say, okay, I wanna schedule a follow up with me and all these guys. And again, your name will be in there once you have a meeting set up in the right fashion. Uh, you can actually set up a follow up meeting. You can give the message, you can give the subject, you can find available time so you can you can see when when all of us are available. So let's check maybe if we are available between 1.30 and four tomorrow for 30 minutes, or we want a meeting for an hour, let's find available time. So it's gonna go look at all the attendees and see what time ranges are possible. These are the time ra ranges possible. All of the attendees are available to attend. So you can go ahead and then send an invite and this will actually go ahead and send a calendar invite. If I go back to the meeting notes app, no, not yet. I have not yet received the uh, email. So if I go back to the home screen now, and let's say if I go to a meeting that's scheduled tomorrow, this is a meeting that was not created by me. Somebody else created this meeting. It's from a different account outside my tenant. Now, if I start this meeting, uh, this will give us better uh, visual cues. As you can see, it tells me who the meeting organizer is. So it's my, it's my catapult account, who's the meeting organizer. Uh, I am in this meeting. I did accept this meeting. That's why it's showing me as accepted. I can go ahead and of course take notes and do all the good stuff that we did, right? I can do voice uh, recordings. I can stop them. I can attach files. Uh, I can upload pictures, save pictures. I can take images. I can draw whiteboards, sketches, all that good stuff out here. And finally, um, uh, meeting notes test taking notes, maybe add planner stuff, 
hit finish. And as you can see now, if you look at the filters, they'll probably make more sense. So these are all attendees. If I do internal only, then it will only, uh, it will only filter out the attendees who are in my domain and me is obviously me as the logged in user. So I'm just gonna go back to all attendees. I'm gonna hit export. I'm gonna say yes. And this is gonna go ahead and export the meeting. And here are the notes for the meeting. So as you can see, here is the, <clears throat> Here's the image that I uploaded. Here is the sketch that I drew. Here's the MP3 file. You can actually go ahead and play this file. No voice uh, recording. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but uh, it's actually playing the MP3, uh, the MP3 file. And uh, here's the invoice uh, attached file. And again, this is a dummy invoice, but I just wanted to show you that even the file that I attached comes through in my meeting notes. And of course, I get the nicely formatted email. Here's the meeting notes that were captured. Here are the attendees. And these were the meeting details. And if there were any tasks created, they would also show up out here. So that's that's the meeting notes capture V2 app. Please go ahead and play with this. It's a really cool app. Uh, it's very, very useful for capturing meeting notes. How many times we go into a meeting, we, we take paper notes, many people are taking notes at the same time and uh, we end up with the meeting and you know everybody has probably some snapshots they've taken, shared in an email. Everything's all over the place. In this case, uh, everything's captured in this app, obviously while your app is running and all you need to do is hit export at the end when you're done and you get an email and it's sent out to all your attendees or the attendees who you, choose, who you choose in a nicely formatted fashion along with all the kinds of attachments. Everything's possible now with uh, Power Apps. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let me know if you liked, if you liked the meeting notes uh, capture app. And please, please, please go out to the community forums. Go out to, uh, I'm gonna go back to powerusers.com. So please, please, oops, uh, powerusers.microsoft.com. Uh, and please, please, please go out to the community, contribute to the community, help folks, and uh, go out here, look at, look at what people are asking questions for, look at who the top contributors are. And uh, thank you so much for uh, watching this video. Take care.